皆さんこんにちは。香川博史ですあの。ペンネームではあの山癖幼児という名前でいろんな本書いてますのでぜひ読んでみてください。さてと、今ロサンゼルスに来ています。えー、とロサンゼルス、こちらに来る前にですね、実はですね、ニック・ガリティさんというちょっと面白いイギリス人と話をしましたので、そのインタビューをぜひ聞いていただきたいんですね。彼は IGI という、いわゆるこう世界の企業をカバーする、えー、まあ保険会社のマレーシア。から、まあ、東南アジア全体を統括している人物なんですね。なんでイギリス人の人がこの会社に勤めて、そして東南アジアに目を向けているのか、そしてかつですね、その会社自体が、えー、なんて言うんでしょうかね、本社がヨルダンにあって、そしてバーミューダで登記していると、まあ、今ならではの会社なんですよね。まあ、そういう中での、今の東南アジアって一体どうなってるんだろう、東南アジアの人と働くにはどうしたらいいんだろうかというテーマにですね、非常に的確に答えていただきました。ちょっと長いインタビューなんですが、ちゃんとトランスクリプションがついているのでね、ぜひね、聞き流しながらも理解してみていただければと思います。じゃあ、早速始めてみましょう。OK。Thank you。Yeah, so how are you? Very well, thank you. Yes.、Um, yeah, no,、um, all... No complaints today. And how are you? <laughs> yeah, very good, very good. You know, we had been through a lot of bad weather because of the climate change. But now、yeah. it is, seems like a real, real, real autumn season right now. I hope it is continue like this. It can continue like this. Yes, yeah. Well, I, I, I do hope so because、uh, uh, I, I heard the last typhoon you had was a very bad one. I see, I see. Well, you know,、uh, today, you know,、um, I would like to ask several questions about the Southeast Asian s issues. For example, like,、uh, um, as you know, that even the economy is terrible all over the world, you know, but、yeah. uh, I can see a lot of progress in the Southeast Asian regions. And based on your professional view, because you're working for the insurance company globally.、Yeah. And、uh, so I really would like to chat to you know, a lot about、uh, your view of the future of the Southeast Asia. And also, I want to know the、uh, so called,、uh, how can I say, way how to work with people over there. <laughs> okay. Okay.、Yeah. Uh, I'm happy to、uh, answer the best I can.、Uh, my,、sure. Maybe my answers will not be perfect,、uh, but I'll happy, happily share my opinion. No problem. But Nick, you know, for the first time, you know, I have a question. See, you seem like you know, moving a lot of countries. So、um, I, I've moved. Sorry, could you ask the question again? Oh, you, you visited so many countries, so many countries, like、uh, many countries? Yes.、Um, I mean, so my, so shall I explain? I mean, I travel quite frequently now, now, <laughs> that, the, now that the pandemic has, has lifted. Mm -hmm. um, and travel is possible again.、Um, I have been、uh, going back to see、uh, the customers of, of my company、uh, who are mainly、uh, in insurance brokers,、um, mm -hmm. where we get our business from as a mainly a reinsurance company. We、I、access、see. the the business that we write from reinsurance brokers, and they can be based in.、Um, Uh, there is a wholesale market in Singapore where,、oh. um, where business from around Asia is transacted. So we, we have relationships with many ins、uh, reinsurance brokers there. But also, we visit the countries where the business is located because there are customers there.、Um, and、uh, in the last few weeks,、um, I've been to uh, Thailand, uh, Singapore. Tomorrow, I go to Jakarta.、Uh, wow. In a few weeks, I'll be going to Cambodia. So,、uh, Jakarta obviously is Indonesia. So,、oh, wow. um, so, some of the main economies in,、uh, in Southeast Asia, because you know, even though we can do our business remotely by email and by Zoom calls,、um, uh, ours is like many businesses, is, uh, is uh, enhanced when there are good personal relationships and there、mm -hmm. is a good understanding. That comes、mm -hmm. from meeting people and spending time with each other, sharing more information than you would normally do on a Zoom call, and, and building a closer personal relationship. So, that's really the reason for travel is contact with customers, increasing understanding, building up a better understanding of what's going on on the ground. 
Yeah, that's great. You know, uh, because I, tomorrow you will go to Indonesia. Wow, it's amazing. Yes, uh, but I suppose it, based here in Malaysia, mm -hmm. it's actually quite centrally located in Southeast mm. Asia. You're right. So Singapore, Singapore is less than an hour. Bangkok is two hours flight. Um, mm. uh, Jakarta is two and a half hours. Um, Cambodia just over one hour. Ho Chi mm -hmm. Minh two hours. So from from the peninsula here. Um, where Malaysia and Singapore is located is extremely it's extremely well located from a travel perspective. How long have you been there? I've been based here in Kuala Lumpur uh, for nearly four years. Four years. Uh, bef before that, I was based in Singapore for uh, for ten years. Ten years. Um, wow. and prior to that, I was I was in the United I was in the UK. I'm I'm British. Originally. Yeah, I understand. Uh, we British. are, yeah, we, we are from in Great Britain. Where? Uh, born in London, but I grew up. When well, my family is from the north of England, um, uh, near a city called Leeds, uh, and I'm from a county called Yorkshire, and that's where oh, Yorkshire. My sure. mother, my mother, my eldest son, and my uh, younger sister are still all in Yorkshire. I've been to York once. You know, it's a beautiful city. Yes, so York. Um, that's where my eldest son went to university. I, I agree with oh. you. It's a, it's a really beautiful city and a great place to visit. Yeah, and the great cathedral over there. Y yes, <laughs> yeah, ind yes. indeed. Yeah, no, it's yeah, yeah. wonderful. Well, you know, then you came to Asia and uh, you lived several, you know, Singapore and the KL. Um, for the first time, you know, when you come. You, when you, you when you came to Asia, what is the biggest difference between, the, I mean, England and uh, this region? Okay, the so working. there's probably mm. yeah, so probably two two there's two ways that I would answer that. Mm -hmm. The first way would be a, a a personal way, and the second way would be more in terms of the cultural differences. Now I'll get the the first my my own personal thing out of the way first. Um, uh, I had worked for all my career over 20 years in England to, to, to mm. that point. Um, and, uh, and my career was, was, was going fine. It was going well, but I, but I was locked in a particular category of business dealing with a, a particular set of clients and in mm -hmm. a management role that was a good role. But uh, I'd I'd been involved in the same um, business environment for for that for the whole of that twenty years, mm -hmm. and I originally came to Singapore um, on a secondment to, on, to on a particular project that was only supposed to last for three months, and at the time, and this is back in two thousand and eight, um, the Asian economic environment was extremely dynamic, mm -hmm. and the way that the insurance and reinsurance sector based in Singapore for the mm -hmm. region, because Singapore is a regional hub for that business, mm -hmm. was it was again extremely dynamic and there was a lot happening. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. um, and this was a time when the, the global financial crisis was mm. starting to hit, mm -hmm. particularly in the US, UK right. and Europe. Right, right. But that, but that didn't really stop the economic development in Asia at the time, which was particularly driven by China. Mm -hmm. um, and so it was a much more dynamic environment. And it was, uh, so I, I found it extremely interesting. Um, interesting. And so mm -hmm. when the opportunity to make it a full-time move came up, I, I, I grasped that opportunity. I so that was the reason why I, why I came. But then yes, so culturally, it was quite a big difference. Mm -hmm. and, Tell me, yeah, <laughs> uh, and and probably it's a mistake as a. Um, I'm mean, going to Singapore. I was mm -hmm. primarily exposed to a Singapore Chinese business environment. I was right. I was I was at the time running a uh, an office of a insurance broking company mm -hmm. um, where there were perhaps. Uh, 60 people based in that office, the majority wow. of whom were Chinese. 
um, and it was a re I had a regional role as well, but um, but the the day to day business environment was was Singapore mm -hmm. Chinese. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, the probably the main differences mm -hmm. um, are uh, around attitude to hierarchy. Attitude um, to the hierarchy. <laughs> yes, it, and. And this is this will be an imperfect explanation, but I, I, I hope hopefully it will make sense. Mm -hmm. um, socially in the mm -hmm. UK, mm -hmm. people have become much less deferential towards um, positional hierarchies in companies. Which means so more people, flat, more flat. Yeah. Well, yes. So so mm -hmm. partly more flat, mm -hmm. but also how people treat each other. Mm -hmm. is different according to position mm -hmm. in hierarchy mm -hmm. um uh, a, a more junior person mm -hmm. in a hierarchy in in the uk would be prepared to be um uh more challenging to somebody who is more senior if uh -huh. they felt they were justified in doing so I understand if they, that. If they, knew, if they knew their business, if they felt they had a strong case, they would, without much fear, if they felt that they were justified, they would not be afraid to um, disagree mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. or to offer an alternative suggestion. I understand. What I, what I found in Singapore at the time mm -hmm. was that in environments where I was used to open discussion, like in mm -hmm. a, a, a team meeting, say, or a, right. a meeting of managers, mm -hmm. where I was used to quite a free exchange of ideas, information, mm -hmm. alternative ideas, and challenge, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I found that even quite senior people in the meeting did not want to express their views. Interesting. I found the, I found that uh, quite frustrating, actually. That I was see. that was my sort of cultural misunderstanding of how people liked to um, uh, to behave, mm. and so they would. So what they would tend to do is either before the meeting or after the meeting, they would want to come and discuss a particular issue, uh, but ah. they wouldn't want to discuss it in front of their colleagues. Or share that, a different view in front of that's their That's interesting because, you know, my understanding is that Singapore is among the Southeast Asian countries. Singapore is the most westernized country, I thought. But even though the way of the withdraw, withdrawing the information is quite different from England. Yes. Uh, so I think Singapore, on the on the surface, mm. maybe appears that, and and that is what they strive for. Mm -hmm. the education system and the culture and environment uh, mm -hmm. um, means that the, the behaviors are not quite the same. Mm -hmm. So uh, the way that schooling works, it's not bad. It's just, it's just different. And I understand. I understand. Mm -hmm. And people from Singapore who have maybe been educated, gone to university in Australia, mm -hmm. the UK mm -hmm. or the U S or have worked for international companies and done assignments mm. around in different parts of the world, they, they, they do learn the, those behaviors that are more normal in an international mm -hmm. business environment, mm -hmm. and they are able to apply them. But the, the way that the, 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 the education system um, and, the, the, and, and also the social norms mm -hmm. do not necessarily naturally accustom people to behaving like that. I see. Well, you know, um, what I heard is in case of the Singapore, even Malaysia, maybe Hong Kong, people need to change their job so easily. So it is difficult to keep people's motivation to stay in the same company to develop their career. How about that? I, I think that's a, certainly, I mean, I can't speak for all sectors, but that's a massive, it's a massive issue in mm. the insurance business is mm. very short tenure in roles. Mm. And, um, uh, in, and, and even this was true back in when I first went to Singapore, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I would see a, a, a CV that mm -hmm. in the UK, mm -hmm. I would discard the CV. I'd say that person has moved too many times. They, 
They don't uh-huh. stick to their role. They don't develop within their role. Mm. Um, you know, you'd see somebody who's maybe been working for 15 years and might have had six positions in six different companies. Well, I, I wouldn't consider that in the UK, mm-hmm. but in, in, in Singapore, Malaysia, to an extent, not quite as, as extreme, um, but um, it still has many of that, those same issues. So what, and, and the challenge that that creates, say in my business, which is, I wouldn't say it's relatively complex, but it requires, mm, please, yeah. um, it, you know, it requires professionalism. It requires an understanding of our company. It requires mm-hmm. an understanding of a particular segment of the market. Um, and a particular group of a, set, a particular group of customers, mm-hmm. and even if you are have a, a, a you know a generally a high degree of insurance expertise, it probably takes a good person eighteen mm-hmm. months before they're fully effective in the role. Um, and then if you think you've only got that person maybe for three years in total. Mm-hmm. That gives you 18 months of them being fully effective before they go. And that makes it really um, difficult to consider investing time mm-hmm. in developing people. It's, so it's a real worry is, well, is, is where we get good uh, talent from and how do we keep it. And how do you have any specific strategy to maintain people as long as possible? Um, well, so Hiroshi, I wish I had a good answer to this. And this is something that, so in, in, in Malaysia, we're quite, we're in, I would describe just, just for ease of reference, our, Uh our business in Malaysia is, is almost like a sales office. It's, we do some, we do some underwriting here, but most of the underwriting, well, a lot of it, the the underwriting and the, and the back office, if I can use that term, the. The processing the claims is done in either London or in Jordan. Mm-hmm. So we're not very big here, but I was mm-hmm. talking to the second biggest insurance company based in Malaysia. Right. Um, one of their mm-hmm. senior people just a, a few weeks ago, and they're a huge American owned company. Mm-hmm. And they have, they're probably the biggest investor in um, graduate recruitment and training in the insurance I industry see. in Malaysia. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And the, the guy who is, I think, the deputy CEO said to me that of the, you know, they have, they've, they've trained many, many graduates over the last 20 years. Mm. And uh, if they, and they were looking back recently, mm-hmm. none of those graduates have stayed with the company. Mm-hmm. So they, mm-hmm. they, mm-hmm. Um, they invested a huge amount in developing those people, mm. uh, developing their professional education, their knowledge and expertise. And those mm-hmm. people then take that experience mm-hmm. to other companies. I so, so, so it's a, it's just probably a structural issue within our business. Also, it's a, and, and this is a, a and I feel sort of uncomfortable saying this at a time of great economic dislocation, mm-hmm. but the insurance business, particularly the wholesale insurance business mm-hmm. has been extremely profitable in, mm-hmm. in the last two to three years mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. is attracting a lot of investment. So mm-hmm. there is a, a significant demand for ta- for good talent. Yes. Um, and the salaries are increasing significantly. So oh. that puts a lot of pressure on an existing employer when they right. know that somebody can be offered a, a pay increase of 20 30 or even 40 percent over their current salary wow that's a big competition anyway yeah it's a big yeah. competition so so, yeah. so that's the time i don't know how long that will last but it mm. is it's called co- that demand for people is mm-hmm. uh, is causing a lot of problems in our in our industry at the moment well you know um just uh, this is a quite a key question for me um, just, uh, uh, I have a strong relationship with uh, Filipino companies and also sometimes I visit Taiwan or many other countries, but, you know, particularly these five years, I can see strong growth of the economy of all regions of the Southeast Asia. 
And uh, do you think this is a really potential, like a 8% or 9% growth every year? And uh, that's still really like uh, different from the other rest of the world. Uh, um, so it's a good question. I can, I can only say what I'm seeing at the moment. Mm. Um, I'm so the the indicators that we see are really around where is investment in infrastructure being made. Mm. So who mm. has the, which countries have economies which are have the confidence to make mm -hmm. big big investments, mm. which which mm. are a proxy indicator of the future for potential for sure. growth. Mm -hmm. Thailand, I think, is 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 looking very strong at the moment. They are ah, they're ah. they're investing a lot in infrastructure at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, I think they're positioning themselves as a um, as a as a good potential alternative to uh, China as a manufacturing hub. Um, they have a you know that, but that yet yeah, they. Um, they're mm -hmm. they're investing a lot in their basic infrastructure. I see. Uh, so, you know, and that's anything from railways, airports, uh, uh, water tunnels, mm. uh, uh, MRT systems, etc. So I think Thailand is strong. Um, that Indonesia is such a vast country with huge natural resources. Sure, sure. Mm -hmm. We see a lot of activity there, and you know, as as uh developing countries uh build their wealth and you know the the demands for things like power increase mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and there are a lot of investments in 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 power in uh you know a power generation mm -hmm. assets mm -hmm. in in indonesia um uh, philippines as well to an extent but indonesia particularly strongly because obviously that's a huge island archipelago i mean the philippines and indonesia are countries right. that have you know three thousand islands each with you know an, an indonesia particularly a population of what 270 million mm. um that has huge potential to develop as a, as a country uh even from demand within the country let alone um uh, international demand for things that may be manufactured there and obviously and, and indonesia is a country with relatively low wages so it is a it's an attractive place for international companies to consider um, investing in manufacturing there. But uh, even though, even though I believe that, you know, um, price of goods of each country is getting higher and higher so rapidly. For example, you know, um, I thought for the first time, you know, because the growth of the economy of the Southeast Asia is due to the shift of the manufacturing center from China to that region. But uh, do you have any other factor? For example, like you mentioned Thailand, Maybe a lot of investment from China, of course, but not not only that, from all over the world, and uh, they are no more yeah. than just uh, just a manufacturing center, but uh, they are developing their own economy as a hub. That's I want to kind of uh, know from you. You know, what is the future based on that kind of situations? Um, yeah, uh, I can only comment based on I, I i don't see the like the from what we do we because we sort of sit behind the scenes we're we're almost like um you know mm. being a financial services company we're mm. dealing with um we're dealing with the intermediaries who work on behalf of the clients I but see. but um uh you have you have i mean thailand you have a lot of positive um factors there they have you know they now that you know we not even mentioned tourism obviously uh -huh. the income that comes to thailand that's great thing uh, yeah that, mm -hmm. that comes from tourism is is very significant and now the pandemic mm -hmm. is over you know, that's that sector seems to be recovering strongly um they uh they have i think they they have shown themselves to be a good place for international investors to hub their manufacturing operations mm -hmm. and and i think japanese companies historically have found uh, uh thailand to be a, mm -hmm. a good place to invest but mm -hmm. now also you have some large thai owned con conglomerates who who are themselves investing mm -hmm. internationally you know uh, cp group is a good example started in foodstuffs 
but now is uh-huh. a, a conglomerate, an international conglomerate um, in, across many, many business sectors. Um, mm-hmm. King Power, the Thai uh, a duty-free business, again, an international uh, business now that owns, a family that owns Leicester City Football Club. So, so it, and I think actually, so I would say you now have most of the, 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 the Southeast Asian nations that we're talking about, not only do they provide value for mm. international investors, mm-hmm. but they have themselves developed strong, capable, innovative, large businesses that are themselves investing around the region and around the world as well. So, so you, uh-huh. have, you have strong business communities developed, well-educated um, people um, who have maybe served in uh, international companies who then, who then take that expertise back to their home countries and home companies, and they're now building more resilience for themselves mm-hmm. by having mm-hmm. their own companies that, that are strong. And obviously, and, you know, uh, J- Japan is a very different economy than, than the ones that we're talking about in Southeast Asia. But, you know, Japan, I think, is a very good example of a country that, that has built very strong businesses over the last hundred years that have been resilient. And obviously, the Japanese economy has had its challenges, but those big international trading companies have given um, you know Japan a, a lot of economic strength. Well, I tell you, but uh, we have a fear in Japan that you know Japan is now waned a little bit, you know, and they're left behind from the development of the other countries, particularly like Southeast Asia, which is highly growing. And uh, do you have any view? And about I think it? British people feel the same. <laughs> and uh, that is a kind of fear for many Japanese. Do you have any suggestions that by seeing the Southeast Asian situation and what Japan needs to do? I, th- I think it's I think it's difficult because a lot of those factors that that are tied up in low growth they right. are about um, they're about demographics. It's mm. a, um, it's you know you have. Uh, in Japan, like the UK, an aging population, mm-hmm. and you have high wages, and you have quite um, carefully controlled labour market, and um, and also regulations. Regulations. So, uh-huh. so to replicate some of the strengths of. Uh, as, you know, these young, young Southeast Asian countries very difficult because mm. they, because they, what they have are young populations, mm-hmm. some well educated, some not. You know, as a, as a mix, but well, young yeah. populations mm. and, and low labour costs, and mm-hmm. maybe not some of the strict controls that operate in Japan, Europe. Uh, UK, well, UK is part of Europe, but um, you know, not part of the EU anymore, or the United States. You know, so is there the appetite? And so, and this is a, and, and, and this is a difficult one as well. How has the UK tried to respond to uh, to some of these challenges? It has allowed quite a high degree of immigration. Now True. that uh, now that has proved to be unpopular with certain mm. sections of the British population, not because they're racist, although some people will accuse them of that, but because <laughs> they see their own wages being suppressed, they see mm-hmm. um, public services uh, mm-hmm. being um, being constrained because of the high demand from immigrant populations. And, you know, and so for a mature economy like Japan is mm. how much political will is there for increased immigration which might provide a supply of younger lower cost labor and that's a very difficult you know and and that's not a tough question question that we're going to have (laughs) that we should have now but but that's Mm. the tough but those are the i think the tough choices that that have to be that have to be made uh and and they're they're difficult ones particularly it's a quite different from london you know, comparing with the Tokyo, because London, there are so many immigrants, 
you know, uh, working together, hungry, they are really hungrily working together. And uh, comparing yeah. with that, still Tokyo, we can see majority of Japanese, you know, mo- I mean, how can say homogeneous, not homogeneous, but uh, mainly homogeneous. And then, well, that limited opportunity, I believe, that's a kind of a problem here. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And, and it probably then, it then forces economies like Japan and to a lesser extent UK into a higher added value uh, mm. activity that mm-hmm. requires a uh, very strong infrastructure and that mm-hmm. infrastructure would include universities mm-hmm. existing uh, strong businesses where where it is about the um, creation of uh, intellectual content um, mm-hmm. uh, innovation be it in pharmaceuticals uh, mm-hmm. consumer electronics mm-hmm. culture mm-hmm. and if you think about where Japan has gone from during say during my lifetime mm-hmm. Japan has gone from being a consumer of foreign cultures mm-hmm. to an mm-hmm. extent to sure. now being a creator of culture youth culture in particular mm-hmm. that is absorbed by people worldwide and I think you know a lot of the the, the the things that were normal in my house when my children were growing up my sons are now 20 and 23 a lot of it be it gaming or or, or <laughs> cartoons mm-hmm. were, was it, it, you know directly or indirectly inspired by but from and developed in Japan so mm-hmm. so maybe that's where the the, the the you know the the future is already obvious it's around culture Mm-hmm. Uh, and from which significant, you know, there's significant value in culture, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, uh, you know, economic value. Um, and uh, and I hate to say, it, no, I don't hate to say it, but, you know, Japan's own culture and its physical beauty mm-hmm. and the way that it orders itself is, an, it's an amazing country for visitors. And, and you know, the 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 potential for tourism is one that you know obviously japan has uh, has exploited mm. to a certain extent but maybe needs to continue to promote with more you know more hotels uh, at lower True. cost it's not the it, it's quite an it's quite an expensive place for a foreigner to visit so mm-hmm, um, you know mm-hmm. uh, well <laughs> okay thank you i know going back to the kind of situation of the southeast asia that's case you know uh, you mentioned that you know you still have a feeling of a so-called hierarchy issue in uh, to manage companies, you know. And uh, but uh, how do you think about like a personal relationship building is quite different uh, between uh, Western countries and the Southeast Asia? Like uh, it is good idea to develop a personal relationship more than, for example, working in the United States or working in 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 London. Yeah. Uh, so. Mm. Um... I'd say, so, I mean, I can only speak as a foreigner, obviously. Mm. To build the sort of trust mm. with colleagues mm-hmm. in, in, in a, you know, Malaysia or Singapore, it requires more time. And more it time. Requires, oh. Yeah, and, and it requires maybe more social contact out oh. of the office for right. them to get comfortable with you. Um, mm. more, more so than would be necessary in, in the UK. So what I'm talking about is, and these will sound like simple things, but I think they're really important. Mm-hmm. Going to lunch with people, mm-hmm. uh, going to dinner with people, mm-hmm. doing karaoke. Uh, again, <laughs> a great, a, an amazing Japanese innovation where they <laughs> see that you are, where they see mm. that you are a human being and not some weird foreigner who they don't really understand or they're a bit afraid because even in Singapore, mm-hmm. people who've not worked with English speaking foreigners, mm-hmm. they themselves will, will, might have, will have often been educated in English, but they won't have had the confidence of communicating in English with, with a Europe, with a, with a European. And uh-huh. so that, that can create some shyness. So if you uh-huh. give them the opportunity in a, in a social environment to interact feel more comfortable then i think that then plays back into the office environment when they become they 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 trust you more 
they see that you're a human being and they're prepared to share more. So that's I think that's so, so it's not, so that's very actually a very cheap way of doing it, but it's just having that realization mm -hmm. of the benefits of, of taking time um, to just, you know, spend, a, you know, a, you know, an evening, a week with colleagues or, or t taking the time to go to lunch with them rather than eating a sandwich at your desk, which is a very European way of doing things. <laughs> okay, thank you. You know, um, now, even though, you know, Southeast Asia is not only just one region, again, as you said, so many countries, right? Like a Singapore is different from Cambodia, of course, and the Cambodia yeah. is strong right now. There are issues about strong influence from China. Yeah. And also, maybe Vietnam has a different view from Cambodia. And sometimes, I, I mean, people cannot uh, liquidate means like I mean, between uh, Vietnam to Malaysia, they can immigrate easily or they can mingle together more often, or still they have a lot of barrier of the culture or differences or politically or something like this. Yeah, it's a good question because mm. geographically these, these countries are, are very mm. approximate, they're close together, mm -hmm. but there are, but there are quite significant boundaries. Mm. I would say much more so than say in, in, in Europe. Mm. Um, and uh, you have the economic and political association called ASEAN, yes. which you'll have heard of. Mm -hmm. They have made zero progress towards having any sort of single market. So you still have um, <laughs> I, uh, high degrees of a need for I can use the word sovereignty, economic sovereignty, political sovereignty. Um, uh, the, a lot of these countries are very young countries that have had difficult histories. Mm, of course. And, and they are, and they're finding their way. And, and also, and, it, and I think I can say it's, it's obvious, many of those countries do not have the most stable political or governmental systems. Mm -hmm. um, and I would say, and there's probably measures of this, I think there are surveys on this and I don't have any of those in front of me, but there are, there are structural barriers to people easily moving between these countries mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. unless they are low cost migrant labor, which is another That's difficult issue, a very difficult issue, true. which we mm -hmm. maybe shouldn't mm -hmm. touch upon. Um, but for professionals to work easily across these different countries, there are all mm. sorts of challenges of language, culture, difficulty of obtaining, uh, work permits, um, and also, di and, and many of these countries have distrust, you know, a distrust of foreigners. Um, and, distrust, and that's something, uh, uh, uh. yeah, you know, people coming to live there who are not part of their the cultural mm. country um so so that's a is that is that i think that that's probably not a, a barrier to growth in the short term but in the long term as as these economies mature mm. they will probably mm. look at integration yeah. economic integration more closely but uh -huh. for the time being they can generate growth without needing to do that and mm -hmm. and maintain you know because many of them will see themselves as being in competition with each mm -hmm. other for mm -hmm. over you know foreign investment and um, that case you know um going back to the malaysia for example this uh, kind of a question inside kl of course there are chinese malaysians also Indian Malaysians and the Bumi Putra, can I say, like Malay? Yes, you know? yeah. And uh, they are really being good. And, but still, you need to care about such kind of, not a racial issue, but the, can I say, like a different, different culture issue? Or, and uh, this is one of the key issues of the management. So, uh, in, 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 my, in my business, mm. to an ex, to an ex, in, in my business, not so much. We're not so affected by that because we are, not directly dealing with the customers, mm -hmm. but the the structural issue around Bumiputra in mm -hmm. the Malay community, they, for constitutional reasons, mm -hmm. um, to deal with 
to have gov you know, government contracts, you have to have a certain proportion of Bumiputra employees. I see, I see. So, so that, so, so that can that that's a that that's obviously an issue that needs to be managed by any international company that that wants to directly contract with government bodies. Uh -huh. um, uh, so, so that's a I'd say that's a very delicate issue. Um, mm, I understand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, and uh, and and a particular feature of uh, um, of Malaysia's history. And I there's see. a you know, there's a colonial history which obviously the mm -hmm. you know it was it was a British colony, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. which actually generally I don't think the British we're not resented so much. I, you know, uh, it's always difficult when you are. British and, and and the British have a, a difficult history around the world of colonialism, which is rightly seen negatively. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, but in in Malaysia, the, they've forgotten the bad things, and they and they or, or they they're polite enough to pretend that they've forgotten the bad things, mm. and they and the things that they will talk about most about Britain will be the universities, the football teams. <laughs> Etc. So, so the mm. you know the the Malaysians are are quite kind to British people. Interesting. Yeah, I'm, I'm so sorry to say that uh, your queen passed away just to listen to you. Yeah, and, no, uh, sorry uh, for about it. Yeah, and uh, yeah, and also I feel really kind of a dignity of the funeral. It's a fantastic things, you know, which I experienced. And uh, now, how it was accepted by Malaysian people because of Malaysia was a full, I mean, colony before, right? And uh, there a mixture of the kind of sens sens sensitivity. Am I correct? Yeah. So, so, so they, uh, the Malaysians have been really good about it. I mean, the the, the thing here is that the the this you know Malaysia is a constitutional monarchy as as mm -hmm. well, mm -hmm. and you know they rotate the uh, the the sovereign ro is the rotates around the different Malay states, all mm -hmm. of whom have their own sultans. So they so they you know they, so there was a fun. I think there's a the the British monarchy and the Queen Elizabeth in particular mm. was seen as a a dignified and good woman um mm. and she was and and she ha in, in during her reign maintained very good relationships with mm -hmm. the, the the countries that were former colonies I that see. were decolonized during her reign and i think she has she her, her personal um charm and dignity mm -hmm. and yeah, intelligence yeah. she has made what could have been a really difficult transition that could have created hostile relationships between Britain and its former colonies. And she actually has kept that group of countries under the Commonwealth banner, talking to each other in generally positive ways. So, you know, a lot to be thankful to her for. That's good. Okay, last question, you know, uh, Nick, you know, um, so, you your plan in the future, you want to stay in the Southeast Asia where you have any kind of plan, like uh, if you have a choice, because you are quite an international guy, you know? Well, so in the last 15, well, close to 15 years, I've very much enjoyed my time here mm. in Southeast Asia. I think it is, and most importantly, I, I really enjoy doing business here and working and living here. Mm -hmm. I think it's a fascinating place. I am 55 now. I want mm -hmm. to work till I'm 65. Uh -huh. My ambition would be to continue to be to be based here in Southeast Asia. Wow! Mm. For the rest of my career, if I can. That's great. That's great. Then after retirement, maybe you may have a two two houses in the Southeast Asia and the York. <laughs> yeah. Well, maybe <laughs> always have somewhere back at home. But um, but my uh -huh. my partner is Thai from Thailand. So so I think. Um, it would be one house in Thailand, one house, one house in the UK. Wow, that's fantastic choice. Yeah. yeah. Okay, um, Nick. You know, thank you for your time. You know, I know you are quite busy guy, and uh, have a nice trip to Indonesia. Then maybe you have a next trip in the near future, right? Yeah. And uh, um, let me get back to you because I want. I'm really enjoy this conversation, so I want to learn about Southeast Asia more from you. So can I have another opportunity to talk?
would love to talk to you again, Hiroshi. Yeah, let's continue to de develop the relationship and then maybe we can create some good project together. Yeah, great. Well, thank you so much and you have a good uh, rest of your day. Good. I appreciate well. it. Thank, thank you very you. much. Okay, bye-bye.